can I not just confirm that you can hear me and see my screen? So I just have yes, the question box. Yes, Kevin, we can hear you now. Uh, no, that's not screen as well. Great. Um, so my name is Kevin Danesi and I'll be coordinating tonight's meeting. We have, um, we don't currently have KG on board. Uh, but here is the agenda for um, tonight's uh, Hi, meeting. Kevin. Hi, Kevin. Hey. Hi. Sorry, yes. it's Oigo here. Yes, you do have KG on board. Yeah. Oh, yes. Copy, share, or Click on share. Okay. KG, uh, can you just let them know? Hello, everybody. I'm here in the meeting. Oh, hi. KG, um, uh, this uh, agenda for today includes a uh, not different sponsor and uh, the presentations from the projects. We have three projects presenting today. Um, if we could, so the first uh, question is an update from the sponsor. So do we have, um, KG, do you have any update for the team? Yes, I do, um, which is, um, I appreciate it. Yeah. All right, have we posted the sponsor meeting everywhere? Because uh, today's meeting is a very important meeting and everybody yeah. should be aware of it. Okay. Yes, we posted on River and Base Camp. Okay. <laughs> have you posted it everywhere? All right. So, now one thing that I will do quickly so that everybody can um, learn. Uh, which is also very important, is this. Um, today is the first time that we are taking advantage of streaming live um, uh, from um, YouTube so that basically people can uh, engage, the engagement experience can be a lot much better as well. So basically we can show you what's happening on the whiteboard and also show you what's happening on the screen, which is really, really cool. Um, we're in October, we only have three months to the end of the year, and uh, the next three months is absolutely critical and crucial to everyone's success. And as you all know, that um, majority of what we're going to be doing is going to be focused on digital transformation and digital marketing uh, as we move towards um, using data to make an informed decision. So if there's never been a better time to join this platform, and there's never been a better time to be more focused and, um, and concentrate a lot more. So uh, what I would like you to do, or you know, if you can just get that same YouTube link and send it to people, or you just test it out right now, is um, we're gonna send you a link very quickly. And that link is our YouTube page, so you can actually see how it works. And this is the how this is basically the first time, and I think anywhere in the world, where people, where people in Nigeria, for example, will be able to communicate and engage with the um, UK team. And we won't just do it via webinar, we'll also be able to do it via, um, uh, we'll be able to do it just via webinar, we'll also be able to do it uh, via video as well, taking advantage of uh, YouTube as a digital channel. So uh, you just, um, uh, if you can just copy the link, you just need to just copy the link. Scroll down, you might want to just, okay, copy the link and share it. And then everybody can actually uh, go everyone can actually go and uh basically have your screen open and while you have your screen open as well while you have your open you can also have your youtube open and you can actually get a better video for groups set groups trust me because they can meet it you can get me so they meet it okay now so you don't have echoes uh, what you will do is mute um, the YouTube so that you can see it, but you will, you will be able to understand a lot of what I'm trying to do, where I'm going to with this. Okay, so can everyone confirm that you can now see my screen or you can now see us on YouTube? If you can do that on Telegram, we'll have to get Telegram open. Actually, I'll have my Telegram open. So if you're on Telegram right now, if you're on Telegram right now, um, just let me know that you can actually see it's on YouTube now as well. If you're on Telegram, so let me know you can see it. Uh, that would be great. Okay, so 
Let me know that you can actually see it. Okay. So can you guys see it? Let me know. And then we can kick off. Okay, check the comments here. Um, hi. Hello. Hi, sorry, it seems to be an issue today. I don't know if we're broadcasting, because I'm getting messages saying they can't, people can't hear us. Uh, what? No, we're not broadcasting. It says start broadcast on there. Well, no, you know, click on start broadcast. You are broadcasting, but it's fine. We can broadcast. The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen only mode. Hi everyone. Can you all hear me now? Welcome to the Yeah, so I think they didn't start the Yeah. All right, so welcome everybody. So the webinar has now started. So basically, we've sent you a YouTube link. Uh, that's our live feed for you to actually visualize what we are doing here. This is the first time we're testing the um, um, work experience hub over here in Nigeria, where you have it, where we can connect the UK team to Nigerian team. Basically, we want you to be able to work and interact anywhere in the world. It's part of our deep transformation initiative where we're looking at worker enablement. So um, at this point in time, this YouTube link is quite public, but very soon it will be private, where only subscribers will, able, will be able to listen to it. So but for now, we would actually just test it out and benefit from it. So as you can see, you will find that the agenda is on, if you're looking at it from YouTube, you will find the agenda on the screen, okay, like so. And then um, as you are, but you would, you're obviously called into the webinar so you can see that. But then one other opportunity you would have is to be able to see what I'm doing on the board, which is very important as well. So now, one of the things I'm hoping, uh, which is important, is that everybody who uh, is uh, planning on joining the digital transformation and digital marketing program is actually on this call. So you know, if you could just type in individual DX and DM, that if anyone is part of the DX and DM, please call into the sponsor meeting because it's the kickoff of everything that we're going to do in regards to that. Okay, so which is good. Now, as you all know, one of the things that we have discussed uh, since the beginning of this year is our digital transformation um, initiative. And the aim of it was to create a, to digitize and automate every area of the business while moving towards a centralized customer data center in order for us to be a lot more customer centric, drive down operational costs, improve operational efficiency, and also increase our revenue. Now, in order for us to be able to do that, we have to do a number of things. Those of you who have been a part of our digital transformation initiatives from the beginning will notice that one of the projects we had was platform integration. Okay, now if you can do me a favor, um, take over the screen now. I think you should take over the screen and let's just go to the um, take over the screen. So we're going to come back to the people that are presenting and I'll make this as quick as I can. So if you take over the screen and open up that presentation we had earlier. Is the AC up? That's what I'm feeling here, but then you need to need to Okay, can someone make me present her? I'm trying to do it, but it's too slow. All right. So while she's doing that, so if you can make a unit presenter, while she's doing that, just come over here. So platform integration was one of the projects we worked on which is very important to us. Then another one of the projects we worked on was Salesforce. Optimization. Optimization. Then another one of the projects we worked on was, uh, well, we're doing that now, Salesforce uh, automation. automation. Then we also moved into data center. And then we moved into, help me out. Uh, no, let's be like, specific about the product names, the actual product itself, what we're trying to achieve. Well, there was UX, mobile. Hmm? Governance. Yeah, there's governance and uh, okay, so in terms of the UX framework. Just trying to get the presentation for the thing now. Okay. Uh, okay. The second one. Okay. Uh, the show. So you don't need to go on there because they can all see that. Okay. 
Um, they can all see that. You know, I think I'm catching up home now. You know, I'm actually worried. Oh, God, you should be worried. Oh, but don't worry, my immune system is strong. Okay, good. <laughs> Should I go for current slide? I don't know why you guys are doing this. I just want to get the last slide. Okay, so if we pick up over here, so all of these things, along with all the other projects that we had, was focused on one thing and one thing alone to help us achieve our digital transformation initiative. Okay, now the initiative, all of these things kind of led to one thing. And what was that one thing that it led to? It led to Basically, us becoming a digital disruptor. That is what we want to become. Okay? Now, this is the point where everybody needs to be taking notes. Because they will ask you about the portfolio of projects we're working on. The portfolio, the digital transformation portfolio. So, the digital transformation portfolio we have, if you guys have your uh, list of projects you work in, you have on um, e-work experience, you will find that platform integration was part of a sales organization, uh, sales force automation, I think VoIP, VoIP implementation yeah. was part of it. Okay, what else? There's quite a lot of things. You can remember them all for me, that would be great. Okay, but we also realized that these things were programs a little. So, for example, the platform integration was a program because it was a collection of different projects that led to overall platform integration. Now, what we were looking to become was to be a digital disruptor. Now, for us to be dig a digital disruptor, it meant that our, if we look at the digi digital maturity scale, we are focusing on being optimized. Now, what does that mean? It means that businesses remix existing market. In, so you can see that presentation. So it means that businesses remix existing markets and create new ones to its own advantage, and it's a fast moving target for competition. Okay? Uh, enterprise is aggressively disruptive in the use of new digital technologies and business models to affect markets. Ecosystem awareness and feedback is a constant input to business innovation. Now, if you look over here, are we now a digital disruptor? Is the question you have to ask yourself. Well, let's think about it. The training industry has always been about getting a certification. But we've realized that getting the certification alone is not enough. You need experience. We have now been able to disrupt the market and create an industry where you can be certified and also gain experience. In the, uh, that's where our partnership with Digital Marketing Institute comes into place. We're also working with them now to create a digital transformation model, which they will accredit so that people can have digital transformation and digital marketing accreditation. Because basically, whether we like it or not, the world is moving, is going digital. Can you do me a favor? What is it? Okay, you open that up. That's fantastic. So put that on there for me, please. Uh, so this is where it's very important that everybody now understands where we are and where we're going. Understand the project you're working on and understand the impact it has on the company. And also, more importantly, the value is adding to the company. Because when you present your projects now, you're going to have to be presenting your projects based on metrics, based on KPIs, based on the value that is added. Now, if you look over here, okay, somebody needs to mute themselves. If you look over here, not me, but somebody else. If you look over here, what you now see here are the list of portfolios, the portfolio, the digital transformation portfolios that we were focusing on as a company in order for us to be a digital disruptor. So in order for us to be a digital receptor, we were focusing on DX governance. There is no way on earth we could implement the massive scale of solutions without being agile on a portfolio level. It just wasn't possible, okay? It was impossible. So we had to understand what the digital transformation framework was. We needed to understand what the digital culture, what, what it meant to have a digital culture and the mindset we need to have. And we also need to be agile, but not on a project level, but on a portfolio level. So we, first and foremost was we had to change our entire governance structure, which I believe that you are all aware of, and that is now why we're using the safe agile methodology. So if you find yourself in the company using an older methodology, you are not in tune with where we are as a company. So that is why we get worried when somebody says, oh, we're going to use the waterfall methodology, or we're going to use the agile methodology. 
when as a company we revolve to save watch out and we're also using tools like jira portfolio on a portfolio level which all of your projects needs to be connected to now you then have dxe crm and that was looking at our data we have spent a lot of money in this area and a lot of time and resources in this area cleaning up our data segmenting our data and trying to automate every one of our channels so customer service sales um support finance how do we digitize every one of these channels and then automate it so that we can drive down operational costs um, improve operational efficiency increase our uh, our revenue and be a lot more customer centric these are very important areas for us as a business one of the things that we're pretty excited about which i've been sharing with you is that we are now we're, we're now able to account for, for 48 is it 40, 48 yeah 48 percent of our business no 38 38 percent of our business is now repeat business while 62 percent of our business is new sales now that is pretty awesome for any business. That is enough for you to go to any investor and say that, hey, for every customer we get, 38% of them will be repeat customers on a monthly basis. And it's a rollover, you know, which is pretty impressive. That's attractive to any investor. And that is why we're here. That's why we've got an investment to build what we have built over here. So you're now at a point where it is so important that everything that we are doing you should pay attention to and you should learn from it now platform integration was very important to us we needed all of our tools to be speaking to each other Riva, basecamp ework experience paypal um webinar why because for us to get to a point where we can understand you understand your progress identify what best practice is and help you become better we needed data we needed, we needed to get to a point where we were using artificial intelligence and machine learning to actually help candidates become better and secure jobs faster. So it's a very difficult thing for us. Once we able to do that first, we need to integrate all of our platforms together. And that is where, where we move towards what we call a unified system. So those of you on my DX and DM group, you will notice that we've been talking about unified systems for quite a while. In the past, it was just one system, okay, then one channel. Then it was um, multi-channel, yeah, and then it was then we're now in then it's only channel, and now we're in unified systems where everything is fully integrated. Now we also know that if we are going to operate on a global scale, we need to be able to take advantage of cloud and take advantage of the cloud services available to us. So if you look at what's happening right now, everything we're doing is operating by cloud. We don't need to install any software, you just need a login detail and you can log in and access the platform from anywhere in the world. Go on. How many candidates um, or what percentage of candidates who signed up for our training last month opted to sign up online? Ah, that's yes, so we're going to go to that as well. So one thing that's happening as well, so if I let me just come over here to DX Mobility. We also realized very, very quickly that majority of our traffic for first time users access the site via mobile. So we had to have a mobile first strategy and improve the user experience solely based on that. We actually saw a dramatic increase in that. Then as we now started moving towards platform integration and cleaning up our data, we realized that having a data center was critical to us. At this point, we can now improve, optimize our digital marketing channels and be a lot more driven by data driven marketing and then since we're not having payments from all over the world we now had to make sure that we um, um created a global payment system where people can pay from anywhere in the world go to the next slide and i'm going to come to what you know i just said just now so this is still the portfolio now there's some things we haven't done like bots this is this is where we're thinking about uh, um um at um a, a uh, what do you call it artificial intelligence, artificial intelligence uh, customer service person or uh, well, customer service robot that will deal with all the support issues. We've not touched that on that yet. But it's also what we were explaining earlier, earlier today, yes, which is being able to offer the uh, candidates more intelligent options mm -hmm. in their learning, being able to bring to the fore. Um, what they need to be focused on at that point in time, 
based on the record of what the machine has learned about the candidate's progress on the training. Mm -hmm. So it's not about logging into the platform and being bombarded with all the videos at once, but being shown what you read based on your preferences, based on what the machine or what the, the system has learned about you, and also based on information that you have fed as well. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Thank you very much for that. And then cyber security important to us as we are relying heavily reliant on data. Well, we have to be compliant. Well, over here in Nigeria, they're also working on their own data protection regulation rules, which we just realized. But we don't have a choice that to be compliant with um, 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 with GDPR. So you can see that what we are doing is not different from any way. Yeah, the whole is no different from any other company out there is doing. And I'll show you some very interesting statistics very very soon in regards to that. Now we now move to instant messaging. We have actually integrated Viber for our instant messaging. Hmm. No? Of course we are, but mm -hmm. now we're starting to see a lot of things develop and we're starting to ask ourselves, have we got the best solution for the job? But that's a topic for another, for another day. day. Okay, so that's interesting. That's an interesting one. And then we then have Bank My Pal, Nova Referral Payment System, which we came up with a major issue with um, Apple, where they literally want us to rebuild the app. So there are, there's been some great successes, but there's been some, a few hiccups here and there, which are very important information that you need to have when you're going for your job interviews. Because there, there are things that we want to achieve, but there are policies in place and there are restrictions in place, or sometimes backward compatibility of the technology or the inability of the technology to be able to do what we want it to do. As uh, we move towards digital transformation, we're looking to acquire through APIs rather than buy. And we realize that we're limited in a lot of areas. So if you just go back to um, the next slide for me, so we can look at this. So all of the things we are doing is more focused on one thing. What is it? If you look over here, all the projects of this, it's kind of me listing all of those projects over here. The aim of it was to become a major disruptor in the industry. Now, for us to be a major disruptor in the industry, we had to ask ourselves, what is our objective? Well, first of all, we have, to, we have to look at our how do we deliver better customer experience? How do we improve our operational process? How do we improve our business model? And then in asking those questions, which is the problem, identifying problems that we're already experiencing, what are the digital capabilities available to us to help us achieve that? Which then gave birth to these portfolios, which was which, which we use to solve our problem. I want to say something about the Help portfolio. Me. I know, she's talking. <laughs> I want to say something very important about the portfolio. Now, digital transformation is something that has become um, a major uh, requirement for any business that wants to survive in the digital age. However, it's very, very important to understand that Rome was not built in a day. Transformation is not achieved in a day. So we have the programs. These programs have run some projects. Some of the projects have been wrapped up. Um, however, the program still exists. There's still room for improvement. There's still room for growth. There's still room to continue the improvements that have been made. So what are we talking about? Optimization of your CRM is not a one-off exercise. It's a continuous process. It's an ongoing thing and it's a continuous process of improvement. You're constantly optimizing. You're constantly um, changing your requirements. You're constantly adjusting to fit what the current need of the business is. The same thing for all of these programs. Platform integration, you're constantly integrating. We started off wanting to integrate Basecamp with Salesforce and Salesforce with eWork Experience. And we picked only about two or three features of the eWork Experience platform to integrate into Salesforce. Since that project had closed, we've actually integrated about four or five more features into Salesforce. And the requirements keep evolving. Now that the hub is here, so many different new dimensions of the business are emerging. All of these things are going to require us to continue building on top of what we've started. So my point is, it is not a one-off exercise. There will be projects going on from now. This is the final quarter of 2017. There will be digital transformation projects underneath these programs and possibly under new programs going on for the next three to five years. Yep, definitely. So that said, 
<laughs> that now tell, puts us in a position where, as a business, we have to now track our progress. And we have to work based on metrics. And we have to be able to roll out iterations, uh, roll out um, releases in iterations on a portfolio level, which is absolutely critical to us. So what does that now mean? Well, first of all, let me show you, because it will look as if we're wasting your time with all this information. But what we need, OK, you know what? And I will just wait for her to pass. Okay, so basically, um, what we need to do now is probably show you basically what's going on out there, which is important. So let's go back to that stats. I don't need any of this stuff anymore, by the way. It's something we talked about earlier, and I think I've sent this link to everybody. You can send it to the group later on so you can have a look at it. But um, I just want to go, go in your own spare time, go and look at it. But let's deal with the main issue right here. Okay. Um, digital tech investment in 2016, uh, digital tech investment reached 6.8 billion. That's 50% higher than any other European country. But we're based in the UK, those of you in the UK, the jobs are in the UK. So you don't even need to sit down and try going looking elsewhere. What you need to do is ask yourself, do I have the right digital skills to compete in the industry? Let's go, please. Keep going. Uh, no, we're just going on going to go straight back. There we go. So, the turnover of digital uh, tech businesses reached 170 billion, an increase of 30 billion in just five years. That's a 28 percent increase. That is scary. Now, the truth of the matter is that when businesses are making money, it means they are recruiting. It's just that simple. And they're recruiting, they're looking for digital expertise, digital experts. But one thing we saw here, which was really cool, was that a digital business is created every what? Hour. Every hour. So a new digital business is created every hour, which means when that digital business is created, jobs are created as well. Talking about jobs? And when you talk about jobs, there are now 1.6 million digital tech jobs in the United Kingdom. And that is two times faster than any other non-digital sector. Now, the question is, is digital a particular sector on its own? No. Digital cuts across all sectors, finance, healthcare, um, oil sector, whatever sector you're in, digital cuts across it. And that is why it is dramatically increasing. Now, then, but that said, you could actually scroll all the way up. So, you have to go all the way up and start going to, um, keep, keep, keep going up, keep going up, which is this one. Another interesting thing here, keep going, keep going. And you can actually get this there is, this way it is. And you can actually start looking at jobs per um, per region or per um, um, county, which is really really cool, you know. And that tells you that wherever you are, there's a job opportunity out for you. But the question is, have you built the right digital skills? If you haven't, then obviously we have a major problem. And what we're trying to do is make sure that every single one of you, especially who's trying to be a digital project manager, digital business analyst, digital solutions architect, big data analyst, whatever it is that you're trying to be, you have the right experience and you also have the right qualification, which is very, very important. And that is why we are now very much focused on making sure that everything we do, we're not keeping you in the dark. As from now on, we're very much, one second. Sorry, yeah, just tell us to shut up. So we're very much right now focused on making sure that you're involved in every step of the business, which is absolutely critical to your success. Okay, now that said, I think it will be good to open the um, um, floor up for questions. Let the program office contribute to this, and then 